Hello guys and thank you for listening and watching another episode of Live Free Podcast where I talk about living that life of freedom, rest, and expansion in Christ Jesus. I just want to come on today to give a short word of the Lord. I won't be before you long and as you can see from the thumbnail, we will be talking about overturning the decree of destruction, the Esther anointing. A now word for this season that we are in, guys. I had a three-day fast and prayer for the Esther's Arise, a three-day fast and prayer. And I want to thank all who attended and turned out for this spectacular event and an awesome move of God. I thank God for people that are sold out to him, and I thank God what you know, he asked us to do, we do it, and we do it gladly, knowing that our reward is in heaven. And we came together to pray for the nations, to pray for the people all over the world, and we did some deliverance, and we had some prophetic words go forth, and it was just simply amazing, nothing short of amazing. And again, thanks all who are participated and who sacrificed their time and uh, sacrifice for the Lord. You know, it will not go unnoticed. God is faithful and he will not suffer the righteous to be moved. So today, I wanna seal that three-day Esther Arise event with this word, the word, the Esther anointing, overturning the decree of destruction. This is a now word for the seasons that we are in right now in the body of Christ. Because how many of you know that Esther is a type of bride? This is what this book represents. The king represents God and Esther represents his bride. It's not about a gender thing, but it's an anointing thing. It has nothing to do with male or female, right? We're talking about the spirit of the Lord. So F Esther is going to represent that bride of Christ, that bride of Christ who God is looking, looking for those Mordecai's in this hour. Mordecai's, will you please stand up? It's not a gender, but it's the spirit of the Lord. There are some Mordecai's, God said, that will not bow or fall back in this season of testing. God said, has raised up a new breed of a remnant church that will not compromise the truth for the sake of peace. There are some Mordecai's that will not fall back. They will not retreat, but they are forcefully advancing, right? The Hamans in, the, in their land, the giants in the land, and all of the things, the mountains that are standing between God's people and his promise for his people. This is a, a word that is going to seal that three-day fasting and prayer that we did. And he just gave me some highlights, some bullet points. And, and what he showed me in the book of Esther, it's not even enough time to go through it and to really dive into it. But it's just enough time that God will give me today to just get um, the highlighted points that he wanted me to speak on today. And we're going to be talking about overturning the decree of destruction for God's people. And we can actually correlate this to what's happening right now in Israel. It's directly tied to what's happening. And it's also what's tied to what's happening in a now word for the body of Christ, with the things that are going on in our lives and the enemy that has tried to come against us on every level, right? So we can tie this both into um, the literal Israel and what they're going through right now with that spirit of Haman, because that's what it is. It's a spirit of Haman, and it's directly tied to this same spirit that needs to be eradicated in the name of Jesus. So we're not talking about anything else but the Word of God today. And this is going to be our basis for every decision that we make and the way we move in this season. And God has given us the 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 like the children of Esachar, right? We're given the uh, discernment to discern the seasons and the times that we are in. And I believe that this is a pivotal moment for God's church to arise for the Esthers who have been in the background. God is pulling forth to the foreground and he's raising people up in the body of Christ, the remnant that will not compromise the truth for the sake of peace, to get along with people, to agree with people. It's not about our opinions and it's not about agreeing with people, but it's about the word of God going forth and the purpose and the plan of God being made manifest in spite of how we feel about it. So let's get into it. So the first thing that he showed me uh, in the book of Esther, I'm going to start with chapter three. And this is where we see the conspiracy 
of um, the plot and the plans of the enemy that had come against the Jews and come against the church, so to speak, right? Because that is a representation of the church. So we see this in chapter 3 um, where God is um, talking about um, recognizing the spirit of the Agagite prince, which is Haman. He was uh, from the Amalekites, the Agagite prince. And that's what we're dealing with in this day and time. And God is dealing with that spirit right now. And I know sometimes we don't like the way things flow. And we don't like sometimes the way we only want to look at God as God is being loved. But I'm here to tell you that the body of Christ has more than one emotion. <laughs> There's a holy righteous anger that comes forth. There's a wrath. There's a God of justice that sits on the throne. We need to get to know the God of the Bible, the real God of the Bible. Not that um, sweet baby Jesus that we were, you know, to raise up to believe that God is just love and he just lets everything, you know, turn his head and just let us do whatever we want to do. That is not the God that we serve and that is not the God in this Bible. You have seen in the Bible time and time and time again where God deals with sin. He deals with the hearts of people. And let me show you this. In the book of Jeremiah, chapter 17, verse 9, it reads, The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart and I test the mind even to give Listen to this. Every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his doings. So sin will be judged. Lawlessness will be judged. Iniquity will be judged. And I know we think that's after we get to heaven and we stand before the white throne judgment. And that's part of it. But that's not all of it. If you look from Genesis to Revelation, God has always dealt with sin, not just in heaven when we leave here, but he's always dealt with sin in the earth. Whether it came by way of nature, whether it came by way of David fighting, or God telling uh, Joshua to take Jericho, whatever it is, you know, he has always dealt with this. Even in the New Testament, you see the book of Revelations, sin will not go unpunished. It will not go unnoticed and God will not no longer turn his head and wink at sin. According to Psalms 50 and 21, do not mistake in God's silence for his absence. You need to read that scripture. And we need to really get to know the God of the Bible and not just this fluffy, lovable Jesus. Jesus is love and love is a part of his righteous judgment. His wrath is a part of his righteous judgment. So God was saying, look at the spirit of Agagite Prince in Esther 3. And we see that the people um, who bowed down and paid homage to the spirit, but one person would not bow. There's always a ram in a the thicket. There's always a ram in a bush. And that was Mordecai. Mordecai refused to bow to that spirit. Just like Daniel, he refused to bow. And as a result, God says, when you refuse to bow to that spirit, that antichrist, that anti-God spirit, because that's what it is, and a spirit of hatred and murder against God's people, um, we see that Mordecai would not bow. and He would not back up. He would not retreat and, um, at the king's commands. And not bowing to other gods fills the enemy with rage and anger. That's what bring about the rage and the anger because Israel will not bow to Haman. They will not bow. So as a result, when you don't bow to the enemy's plans, to your friends that don't serve God, when you don't fit in or when, when you don't want to do everything they want you to do or when you don't want to participate in sin, and that, that fills the enemy with fury and anger. Why? Because he wants you to be out of God's perfect will and he wants you to be a direct enemy towards God so that you can be down there with him. But the devil is a liar today. I come bringing the word that we're overturning the decree of destruction for God's people today. So the enemy cannot touch what God is blessed, no matter the masses and no matter the majority is what God said. He cannot touch what God is blessed. And then he also said that there is also a strategic time that this spirit would manifest, right? They're real big on dates. They're real big on doing things big, right? So there's always a date. We see this in the first month of Nisan in the 12th year, the, they cast lots to determine the day of slaughter for the Jews, um, which was the month of Adar, 
okay? So there's always a time. So we need to be vigilant. We need to be praying against holidays. We need to be praying against certain seasons and times that the enemy will try to use to execute his plan against uh, God's people. So we need to be praying against that and, and, and calling forth those holidays that are coming near. We need to be praying against that. Praying against the attacks of the enemies that every plan will foil and every plan will not get off the ground. That it will be utterly cast back into the abyss. Because he's real big on that, making it a big deal about slaughtering people during high holy days and holidays and things of that nature. So God says be vigilant and be watchful in that area. Then also we see in the book of Esther, uh, chapter 3, verses 8. Let me read that because it begins to talk about Esther. Um, when you, how did, how did the, they even get into this situation? Well, let's read it. It says, um, Esther chapter 3, verses 8. Why did this even come about? Why is it even allowed? Because we know that everything the enemy does, he needs God's permission to do it. Although God doesn't bring it, he will allow it. So we need to look at why, the why behind it. It's not so much as the what, but it's the why. And if we can get the why, then we can change our heart and repent, and we can overturn that decree of destruction. Because the king was the one that gave um, Haman the permission to slaughter the Jews. We have to, we can't just overlook that part. So let's get into it. Chapter 3, verses 8, it says, Then Haman said to King Assyrsus, it says, There is a certain people scattered and dispersed among the people in all the provinces of your kingdom. Their laws are different from all of the other peoples, the children of God, and they do not keep in the king's laws. Therefore, it is not fitting for the king to let them remain. If it pleases the king, let a decree be written that they may be destroyed and I will pay 10,000 talents of silver into the hands of those who do the work to bring it into the king's treasuries. So the king took his signet ring from his hand and gave it to Haman. Listen to this. The son of Hamatha, the Agagite, the enemy of the Jews. And the king said to Haman, the money and the people are given to you to do with them as you seem, as, as what seems good to you. So the signet ring was given to him and the seal of approval from the king to destroy the Jews. Though he never mentioned who he was destroying, it really didn't matter because the, the, the what we need to look at here is the fact that the decree went out because of people disobedience. And I wanna to submit to you today, this is why there are so many open doors for the enemy because we think that God is just a God of love. He doesn't care what we do. He doesn't care who we serve. We can worship idols. We can do all these things to other gods. We can do yoga. We can worship Halloween. We can worship horoscopes. We can worship all of the things, the materialistic things and all of the Jezebels and we can commit sexual immorality, homosexuality, and we can do all the things and nothing is ever gonna be said or done about the laws and this word that he wants us to live by. But what we don't understand is when a king issues a decree, it cannot be overturned. But I'm going to go further with this today because we're going to show you how to get the decree overturned. So when this happens, not honoring the king's decrees, it puts you in direct opposition of him. Let me say that again. Not honoring the king's decree, the Bible will put you in direct opposition of the king. This is why the enemy has a legal right to infiltrate. He has an open door to the lives of people because we have not honored the king's decree. So as a result, the enemy has a legal right. God cannot go back on his word. When the decree was written, that's the word of God. So as a result, the people are now in direct opposition to be destroyed. So we see this, right? So as we look in the book of Esther and the king gives his seal of approval to destroy the Jews, we now know that God says there's no temptation that has seized you except that which is common to man. But God says, if you are tempted, 
he will also provide a way of escape. So even though he may give the enemy a season or a time to come and infiltrate because of the decree was not honored. His word is not in your heart. The lawlessness is going forth. We live in any kind of way. We're doing any kind of thing. We're treating people any kind of way. We're dishonoring people, dishonoring grandparents and parents, dishonoring children, abusing people at a breakneck speed. Because we're not honoring his word, the enemy has a legal right to come in and to destroy you. So you see this in the word. We always look at the book of Esther as like, oh, she got the king and she prepared for a year for beauty treatments and she got to be queen and all this kind of stuff. Yeah, that's true. But there also was an assignment that came with that. So even though God may raise you up, Esther, in this time, there's also an assignment that comes with that, which is to seek the face of God and to overturn the decree of destruction on your lives and the lives of your family and the lives of your friends and the lives of the people that he has assigned you to speak into. So we see that there's an Esther anointing that God is releasing in this hour. So if we look at, um, let's see, point number six here, he says the only people, this is what God says, that can overturn a legal decree is the church. And that is what we're getting to right now. It's called the Esther anointing. A decree cannot be overturned. We know that even though God's word says what it says, even when Jonah went and he prophesied, God relented from destroying the people. When he prophesied to the people of Nineveh, he didn't want to do it because he knew God's heart. But we know that when we come into God and we come with humility, repentance with godly sorrow. I'm not talking about that stuff we're doing just to get on to the next thing. I'm talking about sincere heart. God will relent from destroying. He will relent and he will steal the enemy's hand concerning you and concerning your family. So the enemy, the only people that, the, that, that can overturn that legal decree is the church, which is what we've seen in the book of Esther. And we see this um, and Esther, and we all know that famous scripture that Esther was given, right? That famous scripture in Esther 4 and 13 and 15. And Mordecai said to her, said, tell Esther, do not think in your heart that you will escape in the king's palace any more than all of the other Jews. For if you remain completely silent at this time, relief and deliverance will arise from the Jews, for the Jews from another place. But you and your father's house will perish. Yet, who knows whether you have come to the kingdom or the palace for such a time as this. So, in other words, God is saying, this is the time for Esther to arise. Don't think if you remain silent, if I don't um, go agree with this person or agree with this person, I'm just going to keep to myself and do my thing because I just don't have time for that. But you say you serve God. You're in the army of the Lord. And whatever God says to say, we need to say it. And what he, he says to keep silent about, we need to keep silent about. But this is a time where we need to come together in prayer and fasting to overturn the decree. Because I'm telling you guys, the decree has gone out for destruction. And I'm going to say this. Israel is not just in Israel. The church is not just in Israel. The church is all over the world. This is why it's vitally important that this spirit be destroyed. And I know we can't really take it all in because we thinking, oh my God, the poor kids and, um, you know, babies are being this and that. And yes, and we sympathize and we cry and we relent. We, we just come into agreement that no more people will be destroyed. But at the end of the day, when judgment has gone forth, you might say, oh, what kind of God would take the life of a child? See, this is what we need to understand about God's ways. If you read your Bible, my God of the Bible says he destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. Do you not think for one second that there was any children in Sodom and Gomorrah? Do you not think for one second that there was children when the earth got destroyed by water and Noah and his family were the only ones that entered that ark? Do you not think for one second that when David, when that angel smote 185,000 people that kids were not a part of that? We see this even in the beginning with Moses. We see this even in the beginning when the angel of death came and we had to put the they had to put the blood over the doorposts. And those new those two year olds were the angel of death took the kid, took those kids. You might say, 
Oh, what's going on now? This is not of God. God wouldn't kill all these people. I beg to differ. We need to read our Bible and get the real God of the Bible and quit playing church because God is also a God of justice, but his judgment and his justice is a righteous judgment. We don't deserve anything, but because of the blood of Jesus, he is keeping us. Because of the blood of Yeshua, he's keeping us. It's nothing that we can do in and of ourselves. But unless you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, that protection is only for God's people. I'm here to tell you that God is a God that he does what he wants, when he wants, and how he wants to do it. And yes, there will be people that don't know God that still survive. But I'm telling you right now, God's people will be protected because if you walk in that secret place of the Most High, you shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty and he will give those angels charge over your, you and your family that they will bear you up lest you dash your foot, your foot against the stone. But if you're going to harbor between double-mindedness and two opinions and you're not totally sold out to the King of Kings, then you're in direct alignment with opposition with the King and the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Today, God is drawing the line in the sand in this season. He's drawn that line and he wants everybody to be, if you're for him, be for him. But if you're gonna waver between two opinions, then go ahead and get into whatever you can get into that's demonic. And I say that because you cannot serve God and man. You're gonna have to choose this day whom you will serve. No longer will you harbor between two opinions concerning the kingdom of God. And we have a hard time swallowing the way God does things, but he's God. We don't get to tell him what to do. We don't get to tell him how to do it and who to kill him and who to uh, sweep justice on, judgment on and who not. We don't get to do that. We're the creation. We are submitted to the creator. So God is saying in this season that we can overturn a decree by prayer, by fasting. And, um, also, so God is saying, he's saying to us, we have authority as a body of Christ to overturn the decree of destruction. We have that authority. So today he's saying, will the esters arise? Will you sacrifice and fast? Will you sacrifice and pray for the nations? Will you sacrifice and pray for the people that are suffering? Will you sacrifice and pray for the hedge to be made manifest in this nation and all over the world to the nations of the world. So we see that in Esther 8 and verse 5, that Esther found favor with the king. And God says that the bride will always find favor with the king. We always have an advantage. We have a prophetic advantage. We have the blood of Jesus. We have all heaven backing us. We always have an advantage. We always. So we know that when we come to God with our whole heart, repenting with godly sorrow and fasting, we know that the Bible says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, and turn from their wickedness, then I will hear from heaven and heal their land. There's always a way of escape that God will provide for the, for the church. The church always have an advantage. We are part of the, the body of Christ, the kingdom of God. So we see this in Esther 8, that she found favor with the king. And then she also requested permission to annihilate all the forces of uh, the enemy, right? All the assaults that came against God's people of the Jews. She had authority and favor with God. Why? because we're part of the body of Christ. We're part of the kingdom of God. And we always come first. We always have an advantage. We have a prophetic advantage. So we even see that even after the king gave Esther favor, she then even asked for Haman's 10 sons to be hung on the gallows in, in, in Esther 9. We see that, you know, when we read Esther 9, that she requested it and the king gave her that. And even after the king gave her Haman's 10 sons, see, it's not even just about the spirit of Haman, but it's about his 10 sons as well. So even after the king gave her favor, after that, he then said, what else can I do for you? See, God doesn't want to just stop with one spirit. 
He doesn't just want to stop with the ten sons, but he wants to annihilate and eradicate every part of hell. He wants his people to have rest on every side, every side, not just in one area and then in another area you're struggling. He wants the whole man to be whole. Shalom, nothing missing, nothing broken. So then we see this. And the king gives Esther, Esther and Mordecai the house of Hanan. The king gives them permission to write their own decree concerning the Jews. And he said, do this as they please in the king's name. And he sealed it with his signet ring. So no one can revoke what God has done. And he sealed it with his approval. So we see that. God will overturn decrees of destruction, even as he did for Jonah, when Jonah prophesied to the people of Nineveh. It is not his will that any perish, but all come into the knowledge of the truth. It is not his will for people to perish. Even the people that are doing the terroristic things, even people that are doing horrible things to people, he still wants even them to come into repentance for us to stand in the gap. But God knows in heaven that he will give you, you will possess the gates of your enemy. That is what God is saying in this hour. You will possess the gates of your enemy. We need to humble ourselves, come before him with repenting, come before him with humility, come before him with sincerity, and he will overturn those decrees of destruction that has gone out because there's a time where he's doing a shaking and even it has already started it started in 2020 but we know that it's going to be everything that can be shaken will even the more to the core and we know that if the enemy don't see the blood on the doorpost then then it's a good chance that you're in direct opposition with the king so God is looking for a people that will humble themselves and come and stand in the gap for the nation, stand in the gap for your family and friends, stand in the gap for the body of Christ, stand in the gap, come out of yourself and begin to do the will of the Father. That is the word for today, guys. Um, like, comment, share, and subscribe. And again, thank you all so much for uh, coming out and being a part of a wonderful three-day uh, event. It was amazing. I'm looking forward to doing more. I cannot wait, and I will be posting when we do the next one. But until the next time, I will see you guys in the next video.